What's up guys? The other day I got a suggestion about a video. Uh, someone wanted to know how to set up a CO2 system with a tank from a, like a paintball gun. This I used a, a 20 ounce, just a little paintball tank for my first CO2 setup. And I thought that there are a lot of videos and stuff on this on the internet, but even after watching some and trying to set mine up and having it fail and not work, I was just completely dumbfounded about why it wasn't working. I just had no idea like what was going on because I'd never done it before. And luckily I had some friends that I could ask, hey, is there a reason for this? And they had done it before so they knew what I needed. But for the people out there who don't have friends like that or just people who don't know exactly and they just can't find the answers, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a CO2 system with an Aquatech regulator, just with an electric solenoid, just a basic regulator, and a paintball tank. All right, so here is most of my CO2 system. This is the most important piece if you're gonna be doing a paintball tank. Uh, I have mine all tore down because uh, I just recently bought this, uh, literally like an hour ago, I went to a, a home brewing store and picked up a five gallon CO2 tank. So this will last me a lot longer and it will let me adjust flow a little bit more there. These work well enough. I mean, it's just CO2. You don't really need much. But, um, so back into it. I ordered an Aquatech re uh, regulator with the electric solenoid so you can run this on a timer. So, uh, you can time this to start, to start injecting CO2 into the tank for an hour or so and then have your lights come on and then have the CO2 cut off and then an hour later your lights cut off. So, it just, it's pretty nice. And this one screws on just to that. And it will screw onto these threads, but it won't pressurize it because this is just an open thing and a CO2 tank, like for paintball guns, requires that little, this little thing to be pressed in. And obviously, if you just put those against each other, it's not gonna do that, so you're not gonna get anything. So that's where this comes in. It has a little pin and a little side chute. So this screws onto this like that or whatever and then this pin in there pushes down on that pin and pushes the uh, co2 into this little hole and up into your regulator and that is the missing piece i think these guys are like eight or nine bucks or something like that i, I think i ordered mine off of amazon it's i think made by aquatech i don't know exactly where the packaging is but uh, other than that obviously you have things that go into the system like a, a bubble counter and the way this works is you'll have your uh, line going for your line going from the regulator to a bubble counter and this will be filled with water so you'll be able to count the bubbles going through it and then you'll have your whether you're using I use an inline diffuser I just like it a lot more you can use a, a diffuser in the tank there are some really good ones but I prefer just the inline diffuser I think it's nicer it's not in the tank and it's technically like a reactor so it's it diffuses the co2 a lot better I use this stuff, this uh, black CO2 hosing, and yeah, that was it. But um, it's not that complicated. It is fairly expensive. A good regulator like this one, I think, will cost you 120 bucks new. You can get them used every once in a while, but um, a good CO2 system is probably going to cost you about 150 bucks to set up. And I mean, it's worth it. I mean, I can cut these lights on right now and show you the growth in this tank. I just trimmed this down and it's already all coming back. Uh, some of this is melted, but a lot of it's starting to grow in really nice and get pretty thick. There's new leaves coming off of these Anubias. There's, an, there's a leaf right there, leaves right there. It's there. Everything's growing really nice. The Pogo Helferi is growing really nice. I'm probably gonna trim and replant and get that thicker, thicker, and thicker over here. I mean, everything is just really healthy in here. So I really, really like that I switched to CO2 and it has changed the whole dynamic of the tank. But yeah, so if I missed anything, uh, if you have any questions, oh yeah, um, plumber's tape is a huge deal. Um, for this one in particular, I even have it under there. So when I first put this on, I had air leaking out through this little thing. So I pulled this back, wrapped it around in there, and you can see where it's like compressed itself a little bit, if it'll focus, just a little bit in there. And that stopped the leaking. I had... Teflon tape on this, on this, and everything. Like every thread had Teflon tape on it. 
and there was no leaks that I know of, but uh, there could have been some, I'm not really sure. This setup will be a lot better just because there's a lot less moving parts and there's a bunch of Teflon tape on it. This, uh, this surface also can have uh, leaks. So what I like to do is take the Teflon tape and wrap it like a little bit over. So there's this overhang kind of stuff and this will, once I screw it on, it'll kind of fill in those gaps right there. But that makes this mating surface right here because it's just flat on flat. That just makes sure there's not going to be any leaks there. But yeah, so that's the video on paintball CO2 setups. If you have any questions or comments or anything like that, just leave it in the comments section. Don't forget to like, like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll see you next time.